Hello, everyone, and welcome to the podcast. We have back with us good friend and brother in the Lord, Dr. Scott Young, who is an aficionado on all things Nassar, and he will be sharing what he has uh, to bring us up to date today. Again, if you are new to the podcast, please do like, subscribe, and share so that others can gain the knowledge you have been afforded. Dr. Scott, thanks for being with us, brother, and welcome to the podcast. Hey, thanks, guys. How you doing? Good to see you back. It's amazing that a month has come and gone that quickly already. I know. It's crazy. I know. It's totally wild. It is. So um, there's lots to talk about. Obviously, we can slice and dice this many different ways, but I'll just start, you know, to you and divert to, you, uh, to your expertise on the floor of Nassara. What new developments with respect to Nassara and other things are you seeing kind of come up your wheelhouse at this point? Well, I thought it was interesting that, um, you know, there, there's some conversations, and I don't know if it's right exactly, but, you know, that that Iraq has been trying to roll out their, you know, their go-back currency in their way, and they've had lots of fits and starts, you know, from what I'm hearing. But again, I don't know that, and we won't actually know all the details until like maybe a year or two later after everything's out and you're going, oh, that's what they did. Um, but um, it's fascinating that the zig comes out 10, 20, 50, you know, uh, kind of these real low numbers. And the, the gold market is going whoop, um, right up, right up the chute. And, and guys, I think that's a really powerful thing. You guys got to be really excited at that point. Um, you know, because one of the things I love and I know, John, you have the same problem too, but I get some truthers who will say like, you know, well, you know, I just don't believe in Nassara. And I'm like, and I, I, I ask them two questions. I go, let me ask you this question. Do you, do you believe the Fed is a bad thing? You know, I mean, and if they, as long as they know that the general, you know, points of the Fed and the, and the way that they've operated, they go, yeah, yeah, I don't, that's a bad thing. Like, do you believe in a gold-backed currency that kind of gets us off of the of the crazy fiat that is all manipulated? Yeah, Nasara, baby. I mean, well, I mean, you basically said Nasara in the more most simple form, and and I think that's where we kind of need to come back together because if we don't have Nasara, I mean, we are like thirty times worse than the Great Depression. The, the, Trump cannot come back in to a system that is completely destroyed like this. It's it, And it's a lot worse. And, and the reason why we're not feeling, we're feeling it, everyone's feeling it, but the reason why you're not feeling it in the way that you should is that, frankly, the IRS should be charging, if they were really were in charge, they should be charging four or five times more in taxation to every single person they i mean it, it and there's just a whole load of sy systems that could actually wipe you out and they should have already set the great reset up see if, if if that's really the case they've got the guy in place the great reset should just be on on tap and should have been going and you have to ask the question why are they convincing us of all this is stupid the answer is they're not winning and they know it Great points. I mean, it's all all valid. And, you know, I'm, I'm glad you said that, uh, Dr. Scott, because, again, we can slice and dice this with you and our backgrounds and, and knowing each other for years, multiple ways. Uh, what what seems like an appropriate thing to discuss with you is a couple other things, which is the, the solar eclipse that we just had this week and a lot of people prognosticating, oh, it's, you know, the rapture, it's the end of the world. And, you know, you know, that's OK. Everybody's going to pontificate how they want. But we saw it come and go. But what I thought was interesting, and I know you and I talked about this offline, is what I have seen in the last couple of days is an attitudinal shift that has happened. There's there's a lot more people are kind of showing their true colors. People are feeling people that are usually more calm and lucid are becoming more tense and and almost ornery. And we're seeing that kind of leak out in a variety of different ways. It's really bringing the wheat from the tares out. What are your, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I th I mean, now we in Tulsa we're getting a. I don't know, 80, 90%, whatever, 92%, whatever the number was. So we really, um, you know, I, I had had a, a call with a consulting firm and I said, I'm not doing this. And so I kind of came home 
And my wife and I were out in the backyard with the pups. And it was fascinating because the birds stopped chirping at that moment in time. Um, and I was thinking a lot uh, from a biblical standpoint, because my background is more on, on eschatology end time issues, right? And I'm thinking on the third to fourth trumpet. And in the third trumpet, it talks about there's a uh, that there is a comet that hits down and potentially in the ocean, but creates uh, volcanic um, tsunamis. It is really interesting the way that it talks about it. In the fourth trumpet, it says that a third of the sun, the stars, and the night are darkened. And so we were experiencing that. Um, now, obviously, we were just experiencing a type and shadow. Um, and John's real good about this, too. I mean, you know, the Old Testament is the type and shadow um, to the New Testament. And some of the things that we see prophetically are types and shadows. And yet we see people who are going, well, it's going to be the rapture. And I'm like, okay, rapture is Latin. Greek is called harpezo. It means to pull out, to reposition. And frankly, the harpezo is a conversation of the wedding. If you don't get it, there's so many wedding things. I just finished a series um, on, you know, the tribulation groups. And, and when you kind of look at the Bible in a very unique way, you will see God is speaking to different groups of people. And, and when you see it that way, you will stop asking the when questions and you'll start looking at the who questions. But then some people want to say, well, it, it, it's this one thing. And then they pull that biblical verse out of, out of con context. And then what it does, and when it doesn't come to pass, their expectations, which is the, the, the word in, in Greek is hope, is an expectation. Your expectations are dashed. And and I know John gets this all the time, like, well, someone said, like, Nasara is a psyop, or they, hear, you know, like, it's never, we're never going to have an EBS, and only the Black Hats got the EBS system, and, and they won't let us have it back, or, you know, they killed Trump, or, I mean, just whatever that is, right? And I'm going, you know, inside of the minds of people are, like, blowing up because one person said something. And, and I got to tell you, half the time, I can't even know what you're talking about. Like people will like give me, and I know John gets this too. You guys will type on something and you expect me to answer it. And I'm like, da, 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 da. And then someone takes it as gospel. And I'm going, I, I said to you, I don't know. Or I, I said something and maybe I misinterpreted what you were asking for, right? Sometimes we need to. And especially online conversations get, get people all upset. And I think that that is a part of it. We know that the longer this delays, the heart, you know, grows sick with that expectation. So we have that. Um, but I do think that, you know, I mean, in the past, those were portents of something prophetic when um, like uh, there's a there's a great website called Bethlehemstar.com. And a uh, guy named uh, Larson, I blanked his first name off of my head, but he do he does the best study on the Bethlehem star. I mean, I've seen everyone else do studies, but no one does a better job than that. And one of the things that, you know, we talk about when when you see the uh, coordinate uh, coordination in the heavens, which is called astrology, that, you know, like, I'm not talking about the mysticism there, but th they would see those signs and that would that would kind of give indicators of what God was doing. And, and the Jews did that quite a bit of the time without doing the astrological stuff. So they were looking at the astronomy and seeing what was happening. And I think that's what some of us have been experiencing inside of us. And we then we don't know how to what to do with it. And then we spill it out on everyone else. And we're like, can you keep that like kind of inside here? a tad and realize maybe you need to process it more before you put it out there. Right. right. So just a thought. No, it's a great thought. I mean, you know, 
I've always believed that we need to do what we're doing here, get back to real conversations in person, on the phone, one-on-one, uh, you know, getting away from technology because, you know, too many misunderstandings. We don't even know if we're talking to real people half the time with all the bots and AI True. trolls that are going out there. You know, it's True. very hard to discern the difference anymore, and that's done on purpose, right? But, you know, a lot of people, I feel like just because you can comment doesn't mean you should, you know. Something I learned once from an ex-girlfriend between impulse and action, there's time for thought. Exactly. How critical that is as an axiom for life, right? You could split that across the board. Another great point to that, Dr. Scott, that we were also talking about briefly offline is, and I'm sure you got this as well, not coincidentally, days after the eclipse. Oh, John, uh, Trump is, uh, you know, making the entire country bricks. I'm like, uh, no, he's not. He made it just like with the abortion issue. He's leaving it up to the states. What he actually did, as you know, and many of my viewers and probably your viewers for that matter know who've done the research, he left it up when when he revised the declaration in 2020, which I'll show in a minute on screen, he made it so that states could become sovereign under the Constitutional Republic before, right. you know, 1871 under Grant, whereby states can make decisions. That's why, you know, I had Ann Vanderstill on yesterday and she was talking about how Texas and Florida and even Tennessee are going to a digital gold back token. Now we know BRICS excuse me, Texas applied to the BRICS almost a year ago because it takes about a year process from the time they apply to being accepted. But as you also know, uh, people sometimes seem to forget the details. Uh, Putin and Xi both said adamantly that they would never allow the U.S. to be a part of this, specifically the deep state. So I think it'd be good for people to hear your musings on that. Yeah. And and by the way, no, let's say John and I disagree on something on that. Some of it, I'm going to say, there's got to be room for a little grace between us, right? And and John and I disagree on things, and it's okay. Like, I, you know, there's 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 a way. To, I mean, there's a woman that um I actually I was on her show just earlier today. Her name is Trina Welsh. She and I eschatal. See if I can say that eschatologically. I won't even say that well. Um, she she and I totally disagree on it. And we'll like, not, in, in the funniest way, not come to blows, but we'll we'll joke. And then, yeah, when it comes to the Nassar stuff, we totally agree. But you know, we you know we'll we'll find those commonalities, right? And I think that's one thing I, I would say. So, did Trump sign BRICS? Well, okay, this is my perception of that. BRICS is, and this is the way Scott processes it okay bricks was um is a jasara kind of conversation and they were irritated about how long that it was taken most of us know that they wanted to roll this thing out of nasara a day after the inauguration then it was potentially in march or april of 21 then <clears throat> there was some other delay points and really crazy delay things. There was another time frame of August of 22 that there was a potential there, but then they found that, that there was a, a statement of maybe we've we have more uh, uh, nuclear weapons that we have to take care of. And then and we know that there was a, a really heavy expectation in August of 23 when BRICS was going go backed, right? And and so we were like, Okay, maybe we're we're there. And the reality is what what BRICS is is a a gold backed set of 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 countries. Now they haven't launched all of Jasara kind of thing, okay? But they're, you know, they're working those things through. Now, when you see it if you're I I, I watch a, a plenty of economists who are not even tied in to this Nasara thing. And they look at BRICS as like the enemy. And, and I think that is a real big problem. Just because you don't like China or, or Russia for some other dumb reason, uh, is it should be meaningless with you. But they are actually launching in their own way. But the reality is, is exactly what John is, is intimating to you. This whole movement is about getting into sovereignty, um, having a constitutional republic. And in, in, in when you go back in history and understand the original framers of the constitution and how they were setting it up, 
is that they had to be answerable. I mean, the Congress had to be answerable to the court systems, and the court system had to be answerable to the presidency, and by, on, by, on and on and on. And and the states were the drivers. Um, there's a series on HBO called John Adams, and it I would tell you that's worthwhile catching it because you'll get a perspective of what they were fighting with. So, um, you know, Texas talking about BRICS, maybe they were pushing some of the buttons with that too. Now, I don't believe that we're going to be part of BRICS because Nassara was created here, right, in America. And the Jasara thing was Nassara could, the reason why we have Jasara points, which is every single nation having that sovereignty point, is that every time we tried to launch it, and by the way, um, I'm having a really interesting connections with people in the 70s who actually believed that it was going to happen then. And, and it's it's startling and interesting when you get into that. Then we know about the time frame of 9-11 when it was supposed to get launched. And there is actually another one that no one really talks about that it actually happened during the Great uh, Recession 2008, 2009 timeframe. I teach about this on, on the YouTube channel. That was actually another time when at that point in time, they realized we cannot use any of the systems and we can't trust the Fed and, and, and the cabal. So the anti-cabal said, we're not even going to do that. And they created the QFS. I mean, that was the beginning of the creation of that, right? The same time frame, they were creating the Bitcoin. You know, so these are built in, you know, kind of tandem, but, but opposite directions with that too. Okay, so the, the the conversation that America would join BRICS and then everyone would be a part of it gets into a, another level that people say is like, and I have these Canadian viewers that watch me all the time and go, I hope we can get part of, of you guys down in, in America. And I'm like, dude, why? You, you've you've either had the Indians, I mean the Native Americans that were there, right? Um, and then you then you had some fight with that, which you really haven't you know collated it very well. And by the way, Nasara talks a little bit about that for the for a lot of the Indian tribes too, as as a repayment to that. Um, but they've either had the British or the Americans under their under their thumb, and that's a rich country. It's got resources like nobody's business. Can't Canada just be on her own for the first time in her history? And and I think when you think of it that way, it's not it. it it's, and and someone asked me about borders, and I'm like, well, any country has a border. I mean, like I have a fence around my 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 property. It doesn't mean I hate the the guy behind me, but I don't want the dogs running out. Do you catch that that drift? So we really need to have countries with their own identities and their own currency and their own QFS. So once you see it that way, we want to see them all coming up with their own regional conversation about what they're going to do with their laws and their, their ideas. So is it possible? Now, everyone's done this, right? You've, you've been around a circle, like in a, in a Bible study, and, and you're like whispering the guy's ear like, you know, some phrase, right? And then when he gets that back down to you, like, that is not what I said, right? And I think if if this really occurred, I, I, you know, Trump signing the BRICS thing, which I don't believe it. I don't think John believes it. it is it possible that they, they came to an agreement of when, you know, Nassara might be launching? Now, that one I can get behind. Cool. Um, but I don't know. Right. I mean, I don't know that that really happened. And I just think that we keep spinning out a rumor until it just never really comes to pass. And for instance, me as a as a football fan, do you know that April is called the lying season in the NFL? Hmm. It's it's because the draft, they lie about it. They'll actually have players coming in and everyone knows about the players coming in, but they're never going to draft that guy. And and if you listen, and I've heard this uh, story too, if you listen to them, they will talk about every single player in a position group other than the one that, that they're going to draft. Yeah. So, I mean, 
this is in, we are talking about a war and it's a war over information. And so I would say that you're not going to always hear those, those points of truth. I, and I think what might have occurred if there was any kind of occurrence is probably different than what you think occurred in that way. So that's a way to look at that too. Perfectly said, Dr. Scott. I mean, it's moves and counter moves, just like in this whole operation. And, you know, as far as what you were saying about BRICS, you know, you as you know, you know, as well as I do that, you know, Trump in his first term did, you know, the international tour, the sword dance, the football, all the things people know that have been shown for years and years and years that are, are being replayed to remind people that this was all done in his first term. He already set up uh, with the BRICS. He already got things in place before he stepped back in commander in chief role before he steps back in as president under the restored republic. Because like you said, he cannot come back to a flawed system. He was already in that in his first term. He was working within the confines of a corrupt system to show it, it, he was basically working like in, in football parlance. Do you remember um, people just don't focus on the semantics, focus on the, the point I'm making, you know, as a Patriots fan, I remember when Kraft took over the Patriots and he worked within the old stadium and made it respectable until he ended up demolishing it for what is now Gillette. And you could take that for many teams. You know, he stepped into an old system to make it manageable for the people, and then he's going to demolish it to bring the new system. And that, that's why I use that analogy. So, You know, it's funny because that, that same thing happens actually with stadiums. Um, <laughs> and, I, and I was just thinking about this today, is that, um, do you know that, that, that Congress is, and, and the, pre, the little Joey boy, are writing little rules, they're writing little laws and some back-end issues, right? And they're they're like writing all this stuff and to like protect themselves because they know Trump's coming back, yeah. you know. And and frankly, they know that it's not going to be an election, and so that's part of this this the internal psyop that's going on, right? I mean, if if Trump was really believing in an election, why would he tell you about twenty twenty? Why why would he keep saying twenty twenty was fixed, like? And and for for people who don't believe in Trump, they go, man, he's just like fixated on the on a lost election. Even Hillary got over it. And you guys right. like you're you're missing the the real conversation here. You got to focus in on that point. So the the reality is they're writing all these rules, and the answer is we're just going to throw away the, that old board, and we're not playing it. We're going to be playing in a, a sovereign based system that is under a republic and, and is not a democracy. And I, I had a civics teacher that I was telling her about the difference between democracy and, and constitutional republic. And she's like, and I'm like, dude, you, you don't understand. We're not a democracy. Right. I mean, democracy is actually what the CIA pushes because what they want to do is is have mob rule and then change the laws whenever they want to change the laws, right. and and that's that's closer to dictate dictatorship than it is ever close to the conversation of of um, of a constitutional republic. And actually, in in the Bible, did you know that the word in Greek and I've lost uh, the Greek word in here. The word opinion has more to do with lie than it does of truth. And when you catch that one, you'll you'll be like, you'll be spinning for days with that too. Um, so I think that's what we're seeing is we're going to see um, something that most people can't imagine, but yet it was sitting in the framework forever, right? It's like you went into a room, you destroyed all the you know, all the setup because you're, you're pulling off the walls and you're, you're breaking it down. And then you realize in the, in the cedars, you're going, well, this is a pretty decent foundation. You know, if we just did several things, this could be a good house again. And I think maybe another way of looking at that. No, I, that's, that's, that's a very good way. And the, the thought that came to my mind, Dr. Sky, as you were sharing is fraud vitiates everything, you know, it, to your point, he's, he's, quote, fixated on it to remind the people who have short-term memories that it was fraudulent. And uh, so that brings up a question before I show my slide and, and you yeah. show yours, because I know people are going to say, well, you said you're going to show the slide. You have to nitpick you about everything. It's like, so you can keep watching, a keep take watching, a breath, folks. Okay. We'll get there <laughs> one step at a time. So it's an elephant. We got to chew a piece at a time. Um, 
do you, based on Nasara law and based on what you know about Nasara, two, two questions, because I think this is a contentious point for a lot of people. Do you see there being an election? If there's not, you know, Nasara says 120 days. Does the military step in at a certain point? And when do you see that being? So I personally believe, um, and some people don't agree with this, this viewpoint, but I, I don't see any other way of doing that. I, now, I keep using the old terminology of EBS. Derek gets mad at me when I go say EBS because he literally likes to say the EAS. The, the reality is, what you have to understand is EBS was created by Kennedy, right? And it was created, the whole point of the EBS to the EAS is to, is to instruct the people of a of a massive problem. And normally it's like a nuclear missile coming in, right? Or we're getting invaded in Florida, whatever that might be. And so, and, and it was it was covered to cover over um, any of the media things. So whether it's TV or radio, and there's FCC frequencies all related to this. So they could wipe out the, the ability. Well, today, what we need to have that done is like EAS, which is why... You know, you can get it on your phone. And I, by the way, I've turned off my iPhone to get to not get any Amber Alerts. And yet, how come Scott's getting Amber Alerts through the government emergency system? They're testing it. So what I believe occurs is that EBS thing, and it kind of um, halts the the people out there for, for a short time frame. I do not believe in two, three, four weeks. I mean, we would basically kill all the economy if we had a, if we had a shutdown, you know, and and a lockdown in that way. It's it's going to be a gentle, you know, kind of circumstance. But people are going to be focused on the TV like they were in 9/11. What you then do in that background is that you you show the actual evidence. And I always say there's three points: COVID. Uh, there's the um, I mean, all the COVID kind of stuff, the election, and then you got to do the child trafficking because those act those three actions support um, Executive Order One Three Eight One Eight, which is that they've they've done crimes against humanity and we're taking your money, um, and then One Three Eight Four Eight, which is and it's all related to it says we have crimes against humanity, you've done it because of the elections. And most of us realize that there's these, these famed 200,000 sealed indictments that frankly have millions of people in this. And some of these people are just poll workers, mm -hmm. right? I mean, there's a poll worker in the Tulsa area that my ministry partner had went to and, and she had actually tried to put her ballot in and wouldn't work. And, and she kind of just waited there after a bit. And and she was like, no, just put it over the side. I'll, I'll take care of it later. And she goes, no. <laughs> and so like five people like show up and they're standing there. And she, and so the woman, you know what she did? She went over, reached behind the machine, turned it on, and it all worked. Mm -hmm. Okay, th that is that is a treasonable effect or, uh, well, you, you might want to say it a different way. But these people have no idea what's coming down the pike. And if you don't punish crime on a governmental level that has oath to that, it, it, what you guys got to see is you guys watch John all the time, right? When, if John could do, um, you know, treason, which he can't, but if he could do treason, it would mean that he either has um, technical secrets that could help, you know, the enemy invade the United States, or he is an, in office with an oath of office. And when you have in office as an oath of office, you've got to punish when they have been traitor, uh, traitors to this uh, to our, our system. So that's the part that's fixed. And then what, what you're going to find is, and I was talking to Lloyd Brunson a long time ago, actually now, um, and mm -hmm. and you know he, you know, it's just simple. It's already done. That that the the Brunson case. It's such a weird legal thing. That thing keeps popping up like like mm -hmm. a, a bad penny. And that you can't get cases that get thrown out and then they pop back up even with another little thing. It's it's waiting in the popper 
and it kind of comes up and goes, is everyone ready for the EBS? No. Okay, fine. And it gets, it gets cut down and then it comes up when it does it, it's going to wipe everyone out in the federal government, but it will actually affect, you know, all it, it'll filter down through the states with all the, the election fraud issues. So when you see that stuff, that is the, the beginning of the fix. And you've taken away the media. And then what happens is that now people can really hear the truth. And so then we get into the Nassara piece some point after that, that area. But you have to have elections. Um, because what are we going to do? I mean, because right now, if, if you guys track what happened to 2020 and you, you realize that most of the, I mean, every one of the Patriot industry, industry right now have, bl have seen it, that that, that that was fraud. Now, I was positive it wasn't going to happen in 22, right? And then they did it again. But now everyone caught even more of their stupid. So you cannot repeat the cycle. And so that's the part that you have to fix, because if you do, we'll have civil war. I, I promise you there will be whole areas that will be an up in arms in that way. So you, you just this is not happening that way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, again, just wanted people to get your your take on that. So let me share uh, my screen with you and then I'll and I'll flip it. I think I've given you access as well. So you yeah, can do yours. So. so this is this is not coming from me. This is coming from one of my team members. I didn't write this. I didn't doctor this up in case anybody tries to say that. Here it is, Executive Order 13958, expressing basically November 2nd, as you know, Dr. Scott, days before the fraudulent election occurred, President Trump ostensibly, as you can see here, revised the Declaration of Independence. Mm -hmm. In that, what he did is he based, I'm giving people the, the because people like the, the bottom line here, he allowed the states to self-govern, to be sovereign on their own, to pull away from D.C., the U.S. corporation, which has nothing to do with America, which is if you go to D.C., I used to live in New York City, and that always felt like foreign territory. It was. So uh -huh. is D.C., right? 90, what, 95 plus percent of Americans are not from D.C. or ever live there, right? right? So you're only a citizen. Most people don't know this. If you were born in D.C., you work as a government official in some capacity, right. right? And you make you make privileged income. Earned income is what we make every day, right? The Bible says, you know, you cannot tax the, tax the sweat of a man's brow. Right. So they mirror the Constitution and they change language subtly, like you said. They they take legal, but constitutionally it's lawful. They say the color of law versus law. So it's all manipulation. And it's all done by our consent. You can see the government codes that he changed in here, 5 USC, 57101 to 5707. I'm just going back to this so people can see it. Here he is, celebration of Constitution Day. So he has basically updated it to modern code, for lack of a better term. And here's his signature. Here's his name right here, November 2nd. And it was filed with the Federal Register. It tells you the exact time on what day. You know, look at that, right prior to the election time. Right. <laughs> so it was all and done. it was published on the 5th, which is so fascinating. Wasn't yeah. the 5th the date of the it was The 5th was the election day, yes. Okay, yeah, okay. Yep, yeah, no, thank you. Thank you for adding that. So cool. I want people to see that the, the point of this is that he updated the Declaration of Independence and that he gave the states sovereignty to decide on their own. He just told you this week, folks, that abortion is going to be left up to the states. So each state is going to break away from the union and become their own separate republic like we were in 1871. So that was kind of the purpose of showing that slide. So Right. Oh, that's awesome. I mean, that, that, cool? that is super good. That is some next level areas too. So you guys got a real good education on that one. Um, this is something I think that might yeah, help please. people to see. Um, are you seeing that on the screen there? I see um, it, yep. So basically, oops, sorry. Hold on one second. The dogs are freaking out. <laughs> yeah, that tends to happen. No, no worries. Happens every once in a while. Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, so here's what I want to show you, um, and it will be real brief when we do this kind of thing. But no, go ahead. Um, one thing you guys got to know too is that John or I are not selling this crazy thing called you know crypto um, QFS. I mean that is just a as a lie from the pit of hell. 
Do not buy that. It's already set up for you. In essence, it will be finalized, you know, and, and when the QFS and the Nassara thing goes on. So don't, don't worry about that stuff. Don't people like get all sideways. And I'm like, you don't have to do it. Like you don't have to set up your Experian credit report. They did it for you because that's what's, that's part of the the conversation overall. And and just another way of thinking about it with that. But I like this because of the, uh, of the conversation in there. So, you know, we have to have the EBS thing. We have to have the gold back currency, right. And uh, the debt forgiveness, but, but those things will be really fast. I mean, that is going to be like, bam, bam, bam. Right. Now I see people that say like, well, Nassar could roll out in three to 10 years. And I'm like, okay, what part of Nassar are you talking about, bud? Like, s- seriously. I mean, John knows this better than a lot of people. Which part are you talking about? Are, are you talking about the social security disability part that's going to get increased? And I think that's going to be pretty fast. Um, financial security, well, that one was one of the weirder ones until I started researching what QFS does. And so it takes care of that. But how are you going to do the deletion of three letter agencies? That's going to take months and months to years and and um, decoupling out the FDA from the medical you know, organizations, right? Um, how about the FCC out of a lot of the radio and TV and other kinds of broadcast stations? That's a, a messy kind of unwinding that we're going to have to see. Um, you know, we, we see things of, of a voting system. I think that's already built. Um, I don't think that's a big dis- deal. But think about this. The courts being retrained in constitutional law. Trump actually said, and I want to say September, October of 2020, and he said that um, that they were for every new law that they were coming up with in his term, they were ripping out about five of them. And there is a really strange, and I don't know, I, I wish I could remember it. This has got to be two years ago when I heard the story, but there was this woman who was who's in an agency. Okay, so one of the three letters, and it is a big agency, but it was a three letter agency, and she was writing um, codes, and those codes were interpreted as laws, and she did it for twenty five years, and I'm like going, she's an administrator, whatever, and. And she has no capability to create laws. The, the reality is it's so simple. Um, the, the one of the, the most key law that, that, that actually defines all of Nasara is contract law. So when a corporation comes, for instance, I have a, I have a health insurance as an audiologist. I have this health insurance that that signed me up in 2006. And I mean, it's like a six page signature kind of thing. And on purpose, I will initial the pages as we go through this kind of thing. And yet I can count over two to 4,000 changes that they've done over the time frame without my consent and never even, not even forget about my consent, but they don't even tell me about it. Do you know that health insurance is to any of the end user persons, which is, which is your medical provider. Um, do you know that 9% of every dollar comes to us that you spend? 91% is taken by all of the companies on top of it. And so you don't even, they don't even get most of your money when you're, when you're worried about this, but here's the thing. Um, they, every year in every single medical area, they come up with new, what's called ICD codes and then they start discounting and, and not even paying us for something. And we have to learn about it in the back end of it. And then we have to find new ways of how, how to get around their systems because they just keep you know flipping us the middle finger. And so one of the things is, is violation of contract law. That is going to be the super powerful area that actually fixes so much of this stuff. Because that's the one thing that's enforceable. Two parties, John and Scott. And John is going to come over and pour my my driveway. But when I take pictures of it afterward, John put in a black part of a driveway and a, and a purple part of the driveway. I'm like, dude, 
that's not what I asked you to do. And he goes, no, that's exactly what you wanted. And we'd go to small claims court over that issue, right? And, and if it's as simple as that, that's actually as simple as a lot of this stuff. And that's why it's actually going to happen in so many ways. So I think that's a, a fun portion of this. I'll stop that, the share part. But as you, as you kind of see that the reality is we're going to go to a much more simplified system but it's going to change the mentality of everyone. Like think about if you're a, um, a, a, a creditor, you know, so part of the, the credit system and, you know, so collections companies, it's just not going to happen, but, but yet it doesn't mean that someone won't shirk their responsibility to pay a bill. So they might jump in you know, because people, here's the thing, happens to, to every single um, small and mid-sized business that a person's supposed to pay a bill and they just don't. So even though there's debt forgiveness, would there be a, you know, a down the road, a debt forgiveness on, on a circumstance? Like, well, we had debt forgiveness back here, so I shouldn't have to pay any of my bills. Well, wait a second. You agreed to pay that bill to me, Okay. And so we're going to have to reestablish a lot of new rules and a lot of new ways about how to handle that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Well presented, by the way, Dr. Scott. I appreciate you sharing and weighing in on that. One of the things I think I, I've discovered that helps fill in the gaps, I believe, for many people is, well, you know, we're going to go to a flat tax. How are we going to avoid income tax? Well, first of all, if you read the Constitution, and I've shared it and you've seen it in my telegram many, many times, that the IRS in their own handbook says that for individuals, taxes are voluntary. They were never a requirement. It's by consent. And people don't even think twice about it because you're making earned income. It's not privileged income. You've right. earned that by you traded your time for money. That's well, just I used to have I used to have a woman and, and Fran passed away uh sometime in 22, I think it was. Um, but she was um an IRS, a big wig. Um, and she actually interpreted the laws of Congress and would write them as taxation was for a very long time frame. She did this. And um, I mean, so I would rely on her a lot of things. I would go, okay, well, you know, when we, when the CARES Act came out, she wrote, she read every one of them mm -hmm. and showed that this was created literally years ago. It was part of their plan to roll it out. But then Trump added in little things like the PPP loans that that totally upturned the tables, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think one of the things that happens when you look at the IRS, I mean, it is such a messed up thing. And, and so when someone says, when you want to interact with, with us on the websites or any other place, be careful about the words you say. Because if you say to me like, well, aren't they going to do a flat tax? I'm like, Okay, what do you think that means? Right. I mean, I hear that all the time. I'm like, seriously, what does that mean? And they're like, I don't know. And then, then why are you asking the question? Like, <laughs> I mean, seriously, it's like it's like watching a football game and going, well, th they threw a penalty flag. My my first response is, if I didn't see the TV, I'd be like, what's the call? Does that make sense? And mm -hmm. so when you go, what's the call? Be more specific. Now, if you're talking about IRS taxation of income taxation, no, we're not going to do a flat tax of a thing. But let me throw you another one that some people mis misinterpret. Um, uh, sales tax is a flat tax in essence, right? But sales tax is a use tax. Consumption. And a consumption tax, a use tax. It's actually listed all over the constitution. And it's because it's, it, it is a pure voluntary tax. I mean, you don't have to do it. Now, when, when you see this, the, 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 uh, the Nassara kind of thing roll out, we believe it's a 14% governmental sales tax. And, and by the way, when you realize it'll run everything that, that they need to run, um, and because there's not going to be any, any stupid waste there. But what it does is it says, if you have a used thing, let's, let's give an example. So you can buy a used iPhone, right, on Amazon. Would you pay governmental sales tax on that one? No, 
because it's already been paid one time on that particular product. So if you have a house and it's used by someone else, it would be not chargeable. Correct. Um, and then there are other things that will be deleted from there as well. So they're really more basic things. But, and I've had people like kind of get sideways about it and they go, well, what about like state, local and, and county tax? Yes, they're gonna still in, be involved because I actually did a lot of math way before I even learned about the Nassara stuff. 85 to 95% of all of the state's income is built in sales tax. It, it's not, and, and people don't believe me. Do you know that when you pay an income tax on a state level, it's not even part of their budgets? Mm -hmm. And people go, no, that's not true. And I mean, and, and I, I, I put a video out there with, um, what is the Senator Hiawatha? That's the joke about her. You, you'll know the name. Uh, you, you might remember the name, but- oh, Elizabeth call, Warren? I, yeah, Elizabeth Warren, right? Yeah. And she has a video, like when she was probably running for president at 16 or something. I don't, I don't remember what what, what yeah. it was. And she goes, you know, this taxes sit pay for, you know, schools and roads. And I'm like, no, they don't. <laughs> I mean, the, what pays for the roads is really specifically sales tax. What pays for schools is property tax. Now, again, that's going to have to be state run, you know, to reduce, but there are ways of having enough money for them to be able to do it without like burdening you with a crazy thing that is illegal. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, I think that's a good place to leave it off for here now with your schedule, Dr. Scott. So we'll pick this up next month. Um, what's as always final thoughts that you, uh, you have for the audience and where can people find your work? So you just easy, easy, find me. And this is really important too. And the same thing for John too, is that you really got to go to, you know, the sites out there. Okay. Cause so you're, you think you're talking to someone and, and sometimes they'll, you know, I've seen people actually talk on the phone with a guy and the guy's got an Indian accent and he's like, Dr. Scott Young. I'm like, no, you're not. Um, you moron. Um, so drscottyoung.com. Okay. You want to find any of the sites. It's super simple. Drscottyoung.com. Okay. And we have all kinds of like downloads. There's a new download that we just did. Um, and we're still kind of, you know, playing with it. It's a, it's a download. It is a timeline on the tribulation. So it's a digital download that you can kind of get You can kind of leave your email. I mean, if you want to donate, that would be wonderful, but it's not required. You can download different things. So I think that's, I would say to you, number one, be calm. You know, um, there's a, there is a really interesting verse. It says, be still and know that I am God. Um, I hate to say it in a weird way, but that actually means shut up and calm down. Because um, it, it ain't your job to win this fight. Um, your job is to wake up. Your job is to find a new future path for yourself outside of the stupid systems that they've created. And your job is to, is to, if they're not awake, bring them along after it happens. So that's where I would say. Wonderful, wonderful. And I agree with you, Dr. Scott, is, is the point of this whole community is not to write, fight, shout each other down, have all the answers because nobody has all the answers except for God. The point of this whole thing exercise is to lock arms and cross the finish line winning together. And, and it's great people like you that are helping to do that. So thank you again. Dr. Scott, thanks for being on the podcast. We look forward to having you again and have a blessed day. All right. Thanks.